So today we'll be getting into some news for Bray Wyatt, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, and more. Let's start things off with this news about a bodyguard for Carmella. As we know, Carmella went away for the back half of 2020 and returned with a new attitude and persona. Her character received a big makeover from a persona perspective and a physical perspective as well with all new ring gear. Also, what came with Carmella's return was her sommelier, Reginald. It was a bit weird and was something that fans questioned like, why does a WWE superstar have a sommelier backstage out of all things? Well, it seemed Carmella agreed with that thought. She recently spoke with Ryan Satin on the Out of Character podcast and said that her original pitch for a sidekick was much different. She had this to say, I wanted to have a bodyguard and they were like, we'll get there. And then one day I show up and I have a sommelier and I'm like, what is happening? I didn't pitch for a sommelier, but let's do it. We thought it was a one-time thing and he ended up sticking around and now he's on Raw. Carmella was of course talking about Reginald. Carmella and Reginald were an entertaining act together, but it looks like it was always meant to be a very short-lived duo. Reginald was fired by Carmella. He seemed to be on his way out after being denied again by Carmella, Sasha Banks, and more. But it was Nia Jax who saved him and gave him a role alongside her on Raw. But Carmella's original pitch could have been something great as well. A bodyguard definitely fits the theme of her character more than a random sommelier who can't really do much for her. Carmella's character sort of carries herself like these big time celebrities. And what do all big time celebrities have? They have bodyguards. So it would have been fitting to see Carmella with a bodyguard since she really does carry herself like this massive star. Having the bodyguard would also free up Carmella to trash talk her rivals even more since she knows that they'll have to get through her bodyguard first before they'll be able to get their hands on her. Guess you can see it would be similar to AJ Styles and Omos. AJ and Omos are tag team partners in current day, but that relationship started off as Omos being the bodyguard for AJ Styles, which gave AJ Styles more wiggle room to say and do things that he normally wouldn't do without Omos by his side. So maybe that's what Carmella really wanted for her return, but maybe they thought it would be too similar to AJ and Omos, so maybe that's why it never happened. Either way, it's still interesting to hear about Carmella's original pitch, and maybe it can still happen one day down the line. So let's get into what many people are labeling as the first hint that Bray Wyatt could be coming back soon. And that's the hint, of course, of Alexa Bliss's music. Despite Alexa Bliss splitting from Bray Wyatt in April, she was still using Bray Wyatt's theme song, graphics, and other small Bray Wyatt-related things. But as of the June 21st edition of Raw, Alexa Bliss has officially left the Bray Wyatt umbrella. Alexa Bliss went through another rebranding to distance herself more from the Bray Wyatt brand, the Bray Wyatt universe. Alexa now has a brand new entrance music with her own voiceover on the track. She has new entrance graphics, a new nameplate, and everything else. All of the Bray Wyatt related things are now gone from Alexa Bliss. She is now her own standalone character with her own brand, which was the right move. It was extremely weird for Alexa Bliss to keep using the Firefly Funhouse theme song after the split. So at least that situation is handled. Fans feel like this can be a good hint that Bray Wyatt is on his way back to television since the Firefly Funhouse theme is no longer being used by Alexa. It would be extremely awkward for Bray to return to the Funhouse with the theme song while Alexa is still using it to get into the ring as well. So it looks like they freed up the Funhouse theme song from being used because Bray is on his way back. What will Bray do upon his return? Well, you can scratch everything out with Alexa Bliss. Looks like they're officially done and going their separate ways. So, who's left? Well, Jeff Hardy is a good candidate for starters. Jeff Hardy has been very vocal about wanting to bring his Willow character into WWE for a feud with Bray Wyatt. Jeff even mentioned all these ideas for cinematic matches with Bray as well. Not to mention that there is history between the two of them. Bray was tagging with Jeff's brother, Matt, a handful of years ago, and they even became tag team champions together. So there is some history there between Wyatt and the Hardys. With Alexa gone, maybe Bray and The Fiend are looking for someone to fill that void. Maybe he does try to recruit someone like Jeff Hardy and get into his head and that leads to their feud. But Jeff Hardy would be one of the top possible rivals for a returning Bray Wyatt. The other possibility is, of course, Bobby Lashley. There's nothing but mixed rumors right now on Brock Lesnar being at SummerSlam 
and not being at SummerSlam. So it's still a messy rumor there and way too early to tell if he's returning. But if Brock Lesnar doesn't return, then Lashley is still in need of a big opponent. And if there's no Brock Lesnar, who's credible enough to be Bobby Lashley's SummerSlam opponent? Yeah, you could argue that it's a good spot for The Fiend. The Fiend even made his debut at SummerSlam and has been a part of SummerSlam since his debut. So, does Bray Wyatt serve as Bobby Lashley's opponent? The only problem with that is the fact that The Fiend will be coming back just to lose again in another massive match, and that just can't happen at all. He's already lost so many matches in a row and hasn't won a match since last October, so he really can't afford another loss. That will absolutely destroy whatever momentum he actually has left. But we'll see what they have planned for Bray Wyatt's return, but it definitely appears like it's happening here over the summer. Nikki Cross debuted a new superhero persona and character this week, and it was another big point of discussion online. Some fans are liking the new character, while others thought it was just another embarrassing move for WWE. Fans all took different sides. Some claimed that it's impossible to have fun and try different things because a majority of fans hate everything that's presented to them. There's some fans that don't like what Roman is doing, what Apollo is doing, what Alexa Bliss is doing, The Fiend is doing, and many others. You can't please everyone. Everyone knows that. But there's some fans out there that seem quick to dismiss something and give it no shot at all. They don't even like The Fiend. They don't like Alexa Bliss. Now Nikki Cross. So what exactly do these fans want? They must prefer the bland, generic, no persona WWE superstars. Someone pointed out that Hurricane was laughed at and made fun of by everyone, but turned out to be a massive success of a character. Hurricane even responded to Nikki Cross's new character and said that he supports it and to give it a chance. Now, from a theory and storyline point of view, some fans are wondering if Nikki Cross's new persona could be a result of the Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss influence. Remember that Nikki Cross was extremely close to Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss's storyline last summer. So, could this be a late Fiend effect slash Alexa effect that she's going through right now? A lot of people say that Apollo's talk with Roman influenced the new Apollo. So, did all those months of having interactions with Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss lead Nikki Cross to having this big character change? It's one possible theory and question that you can wonder about. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching guys.